We are in the middle of the desert in Southern California near Joshua Tree and are about to start drilling what is likely to be a deep, deep well through mostly granite in search of water. I've never seen this before and I think it's likely to be a really cool thing to see. So join me for a very special Let's Overthink This. The first thing we did was to build a berm. We had a tractor come by and push up some land to create a little bit of a wall. When you're drilling a well, all that material has to go somewhere, and they use water to clear out the hole as they're drilling it. And if you don't want to create just like a river of sludge down your land, that's one thing you can do. It collects it all, and it dries in place. Then the drilling machine arrives, quite an impressive machine, a lot larger looking in person, but super cool stuff on this. Lots of hydraulics, big pumps. Uh, one of the things I learned is it has a really enormous compressor and air pump on it because the end of the drilling head, the carbide tip, uh, is like an impact head that has to break through granite and it uses compressed air to do that. They also have a huge volume air compressor on there to pump all of the cuttings and water out of the hole all the way back up to the top so you can clear it out. And all of that is located on this one truck. And then you have support trucks that show up every once in a while to fill it with fuel and to replenish the water in the water tank sitting next to it that they keep on sucking the water out of and pumping down into the end of the drill head. They level the drilling rig. You can imagine you'd want to drill a well straight up and down and uh, probably some funky stuff can happen if you're not letting gravity help you. And there you go, we're all set up. We got the drill rig, we got the berm set up for uh, capturing all the, the muck, water tank, ready to find some water in the middle of the desert. First thing they're gonna do is drill a large hole only to about 20 feet. So what they do is they take the largest of their bits, at least that they used on my land, I think the end of this is like 10 inches, 12 inches in diameter, it's pretty big. And they're gonna fixture this in their machine. You can see they're just kind of, this is the very first thing they've done. They're lowering it in, getting it all fixtured in. And then this is how the machine uses these 20 foot drill sections. So the top screws into it, it pulls it out of the carousel that retracts, you'll see more of this later. And then they thread the bottom into whichever bit they're using. They're gonna start drilling. They start kind of turning this. The gentleman on the right is making sure there's a nice clear uh, path, like a sluiceway for the, the water and cuttings to go down into that collection area that we made. They're basically using compressed air and some water and, uh, and hammering down just to make this hole for about 20 feet. This top part is what rotates the whole thing. And the operator has a gauge that shows uh, the amount of down pressure as well as the amount of torque, the rotational torque. So you can tell if it's binding, if the, the gauge is spiking a lot or if it's turning pretty steadily. This is a time lapse of us kind of drilling through. You actually want there to be hammering in that first 20 feet because if there's hammering, it means they're hitting rock and it means you'll be getting a pretty stable hole for the next step. Otherwise, it's just more likely to crumble into itself. So now they pulled it out they unscrew the 20 foot drill section, put that away in the carousel. Now they're gonna take that large bit out. You can see what it looks like here after it's been pulled out of the ground. And put it away, we don't need this one anymore. They're gonna disconnect it. That's the hole. Now the ground is stabilized with this kind of foam they've been pumping into it. They pump in this agent that kind of sticks to the sides, stabilizes it long enough for them to do the next step, which is they're gonna put a 20 foot steel well casing in.
Now they didn't drill that hole exactly 20 feet deep. They left it shy by maybe a couple of feet so that the top of this metal sticks out of the ground and forevermore that's the part you see when you're looking at your well is the end of this steel sticking up. So that's it, they just kind of lower it in. They have these cool clamps that hook onto the end. It's gonna stop naturally when it hits the end of that hole they just drilled. Now they're taking a smaller bit. This is the bit they're gonna use to drill the rest of the well. It fits inside that steel casing. So it's probably, you know, four inches smaller than that first diameter. So I actually don't know, but maybe this is um, six inches in diameter at the end of it. And they're actually using it just to register where the center is. Because what they're gonna do is they're gonna pour concrete all the way around that steel tube to fix it in place, to make sure that it doesn't move as they're drilling the rest of the well and to make sure earth doesn't cave in around it, and to make sure no surface water can pour down around that steel tube and contaminate the groundwater source. And they're just using that smaller drill bit as a centering thing to make sure that they got the same amount of gap all the way around it. I thought we'd take a closer look at the process. Most of the drilling kind of goes the same way. They're, they're picking up another stick, screwing the big rotating head into it, and then screwing that into the sections of drill rod that are already in the ground, and they just keep on going, 20 foot sections at a time. And you can see there's a big steel fork right there at the bottom. That steel fork is holding all of the weight and it's keeping it from rotating. There's some flats on the side of the drill rod that lets them kind of torque that thread together. Then he pulls it a little bit up, retracts that fork, and down we go. When they reach the end of each 20 foot section, they retract a little bit, I think to make sure the, the bottom of the head isn't kind of touching the ground and then they force a bunch of air and probably a little bit of water through there they're actually trying to clear out the hole it forces the well to kind of bubble over and it takes some number of minutes for all the kind of rocks and pebbles that were broken up to kind of bubble out of the top then after that happens for a while they put that fork in there it holds all the rod they back out that top head they kind of step back because there's a lot of pressure and i think the the air gets quite hot in that drilling rod raise this kind of actuator head all the way to the top and keep on going. There's a number of ways they can load the rod in. There's kind of a hinged rack so that you can get a rod set up vertically and then just like swing it in. It can be in that carousel we saw earlier and he has a winch on the side that he can use to keep on loading more rod off of a truck. You can see in this shot that the berm has been working. It's been collecting all the cuttings and water and it's not dripping all over the land. This is how most of it goes. There's kind of water and air being forced up there and it's just like this mud slurry coming up the whole time. They're constantly having to shovel and clear out that to make sure that the muck and clearings are going where they want them to. Drilling away, drilling away. Shoveling the muck aside. Pretty much what it looks like. You can see the steel well casing at the top there. This is that river of sludge, which I didn't want all of my land. And you can see in this shot, the kind of foaminess. That's from that foam stabilizer they were pumping in for the first 20 feet or so. And so we drilled and drilled and drilled. In this area, you're not expecting to hit a big reservoir of water, but rather veins, spaces and fractured rock where there's water flowing between them. And while we definitely need water, we don't need a crazy amount of it. It's not for agriculture or a farm, it's just a house. 
and there will be a water storage tank so we can steadily pull a small amount of water to keep it full. But boy, we drilled. 30 20 foot sections of drill rod all the way down to 600 feet. That's maybe the height of a 50 story building. What's amazing to me is that there's only steel casing for the first 20 feet. The 580 feet under it is just a hole through rock, stable enough to not cave in on itself. A huge, huge thanks to North American Drilling. This is not a sponsored video. I definitely paid full price for their services, but I was unbelievably impressed by their skills and professionalism and the quality of their work. They're basically a family business and have been drilling for decades in this area. Huge thanks to those guys. But did we hit water? That's next time. Please click the like button. Please subscribe. See you then.